In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Classic Tweens to create a simple animation where we've got a car that drives across the page. Okay, it's a pretty rubbish looking car, but it will show you that simple technique of Classic Tweens. It's very similar to Motion Tweens, which you learnt in the last tutorial. So I'll pop over to Flash now, or Animate, whichever version you have, and we're going to make ourselves an ActionScript 3.0 file and you'll see that your stage appears on the page. Don't forget to go to your magnification box here and choose fit in window or show all so you can see your entire stage. Now the first thing you want to do is start by drawing a background. So down the bottom in your timeline, let's rename layer one to sky. What we're gonna do is start by drawing the sky in. Now with your black arrow tool selected, you should have an option down here to change the stage color. Just pick a light blue that's gonna re resemble the sky. Yeah, it's a pretty nice light blue. In the sky, we're going to draw the sun first of all. So grab your oval tool here. I want you to turn the stroke off, if it's not already. And for your fill color, I want you to choose one of these radial gradients down the bottom here. Okay, I'm just going to choose this black and red one to start with. And holding shift, so I can draw the perfect circle, I'm just going to draw a little sun up in the corner of the page. And with your black arrow, I want you to go and select the sun that you just drew and find your color palette box. Okay, if you can't see that color palette there, you might need to go to your window and select color. Now in this color palette, what I'm going to get you to do is look down the bottom here where you've got the red and the black. That's the color of the circle at the moment. I'm just going to get you to double click on the little red padlock down there and change it to yellow. Double click on the black one and change it to a light orange. And that's a much better looking sun. In the sky, you're also going to see things like clouds. Okay, so to draw clouds, what I do is grab the brush tool and change my fill color back to white. And I go down the bottom here and make sure that I've got my size set to the largest size and the circle brush. And what I'm going to do is simply go out onto my stage here and simply draw on a few circles. And you'll see the flash will smooth those lines out. And as you overlap them, they'll begin to look like little cartoon type clouds. So draw yourself two or three clouds up in the sky there, try and make them look a little bit different from one another if you can, maybe some bigger, some smaller, something like that. Okay, if you wanted to you could actually convert these to symbols and put a blur effect on them to make them look pretty cool as well, but I won't worry about doing that in this tutorial. I don't want to confuse you too much. So that's basically our sky setup. So I'm going to lock that layer into place. The next thing I'm going to draw in my background on a new layer is some mountains or some hills. So I'm just going to call the next layer hills. Before I start drawing these hills I just want to pop up to my view menu and select rulers and you'll see that the rulers appear around the top and left hand side of the page. I just want you to pick up those rulers by clicking and dragging over to the edges of your page. Okay, Try and get them smack bang on the zero running down the left hand side of the page. This top one I want you to bring right to the bottom here Uh, nearly got it. This one's a bit fiddly. Close enough. And I'll drag one over to the right hand side as well. We just don't need one at the top, but we need them on the left and the right side and down the bottom. Okay, and what I'm going to do to draw these hills is use the pen tool. Now the pen tool is this one here. It's a bit tricky to use when you first use it. Okay, so you're going to have to go slowly and carefully watch the video and see how I do this. So with the pen tool selected, I want you to grab a black stroke color and a green fill color. Actually, can't do a fill color yet, sorry. Just the black stroke for now. We have to do the outline of the shape first. My bad. So what I'm going to do is start oh, roughly about here. So it's near the halfway point, probably a little bit lower than halfway. And I'm going to try and click right on that blue ruler that we brought onto the page. When you click once, you'll see a little purple dot appear. That's fine. That's the starting point of our first mountain. Basically, I want an upside down U shape or an upside down V shape for my mountain. Okay, so we've got our starting point over here. I'm just going to move straight across to the right, probably about a third of the way into my page because I'm going to draw three mountains. This time, when I click my mouse, I'm going to hold it down. So I'm going to click and hold and then drag down. And as I'm dragging down, you can see the shape of this mountain starting to appear. Okay. You can move it left and right and whatnot, so try and get yourself a shape that looks something like that. Okay, we've got, once you've got it, you can let go of your mouse 
and you've got this upside down U shape. Okay, I'm going to press Control minus now just to zoom out for a second so we can see the bottom of this purple line here. These are called handles. What I'm going to get you to do now is draw the second mountain. What we have to do is hold the Alt key on your keyboard and then pick up the end handle down here and move it in the direction we want the next mountain to go. So obviously you want it to go up towards the sky. Okay, you can let go of that once you've dragged it up there and you can let go of Alt. Now, this is considered our starting point just here for our next mountain. Okay, so we've got our starting point. We've got the direction the mountain's going to go. So all we have to do now is come across about two thirds of the way across the page, click, hold your mouse and drag down and we can draw the second mountain. So I might make this one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go up into the clouds. And I'll let go of my mouse once I've got my second mountain in. You can see these purple handles have appeared again. We're just going to repeat the process one more time. So we're going to hold Alt. You'll see your mouse cursor changes when you hold Alt. Come down and pick up the end of that handle and drag it up in the direction you want the next mountain to go. Okay, so again, it's going to go up towards the sky. Let go of Alt and your mouse once you've got it in the right direction. Now what I want you to do, I'm going to zoom back in here by pressing Control Plus. I'm simply going to make sure that I'm clicked right on this ruler on the right hand side and I can click and drag down again and get my final mountain put in. So I've got three mountains now, but we're not finished yet. Okay, what we have to do is connect all these lines up. So what I'm going to do is just scroll down a little bit and you'll see this handle that's appeared on this final mountain. I want you to hold Alt and drag that across so it's coming straight down the edge of the page. It should be running straight down the right hand side of the page. What I'm going to do is just click once in that bottom right corner. You don't have to hold your mouse, just click once and that's going to draw a line from the end of the mountain straight into that corner. Then we're going to go straight across to the bottom left corner and I want you to click your mouse once there and then come back to the starting point just up here and click right on that starting point. Okay, You've now drawn your mountains and you've closed in that shape. You should be able to now grab your fill bucket and fill this in with a colour if we've connected these lines properly. So I'm going to go across to my fill bucket over here and select that with my paint bucket tool, I think it's called in Flash. Go and select yourself a green colour that you want your mountains to be or blue, whatever colour you want the mountains and simply click inside them. Fingers crossed yours coloured in and it's looking something like that. You can actually pick your rulers up now with your black arrow and just drag them off the page. They should just disappear once you drag them off the edges of the pages. Okay, so that's how our mountains should be looking or our hills. I'm going to lock that layer once we've got those drawn. I know it's a little bit confusing, so make sure you put your hand up if you do get a bit stuck with the pen tool. Uh, I'm going to make a new layer again now, and I'm going to call this one Road. We're going to draw a road for our car to drive on that cuts along the bottom of the mountains here. To draw our road, we're going to grab our rectangle tool, and we're going to turn our stroke off and we're going to choose a dark grey for our fill colour. We're simply going to start on the edge of the page and go all the way to the bottom. It should snap into position so you've got the bottom of your page now with a grey road on it. Through the middle of that road we're going to draw some road lines so just grab your line tool, change your colour to white, change it from a solid line to a dashed line and your stroke size at the moment it's one, let's just turn it up one to two point Okay, and I'm going to start pretty much in the middle of this grey box, hold shift and just drag straight across and you should have some road lines now going through the centre of your road. Alrighty, we can lock that layer now. Finally we're going to draw a car. Okay, there's lots of ways to draw cars, I just want to keep it simple in this one, so make a new layer and call it car. I'm going to grab my circle tool, oval tool, sorry, and change my colour to red for the fill and turn the stroke off and what I'm going to do is just draw an oval on the page looking something like that. I'll grab my black arrow then and I'm going to highlight about half of that car or half of that circle at the moment and just press delete. It's going to be the top of our car. You can, once you've clicked off it with your black arrow, hover around the top of the shape and you'll see your mouse cursor will slightly change. That means you can pick your car up and you can 
move it around and do whatever you want to do to it. Okay, so that's that. I might just put a little front bit on it too. This probably isn't going to look any good, but we'll give it a bash. Um, so I'm just drawing another circle there. Might need to grab my black arrow and chop that bit off as well. Oh, geez, this is looking rough, but let's roll with it. Okay, so that will connect the shapes, and now we've got a very basic, horrendous looking car, I'd say, if anything. Now, once we've got the basic shape of our car drawn, you can draw some wheels by grabbing your oval tool. What I'm going to do is put a black stroke on it, and you can have solid, hairline, dash, whatever you want. I might even try a ragged one and see how that looks. I'm going to turn the size up. I'll go to about size 12. And you can choose what color the inside of your tires are going to be. I'm just going to choose white. Holding shift, I'm just going to go and draw onto the page there. I can see that that ragged board is no good, so I'm going to undo that and just go back to what I know. I'll just go with a hairline one. See how that, oh no, hairline's no good. I'll try solid and make it about size 12 again. There you go, it's looking better. That looks a bit more like a tyre. Once you draw one, highlight it. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Okay, and you can grab that one and bring it down into line here. You should be able to just pick those two up. Move them over here into position somewhere. Oh, geez, a bit, bit rough. Um, I think I need to move this back one back a bit. A bit hard to line up with the other circle, but yeah, something like that doesn't look too bad. Um, if you want a window in the car, geez, I might use my pen tool again for this. I'm just going to simply click, click and drag a little bit. Oops, I've got my stroke on too high. Change your stroke back to one if you can. Make sure it's solid. Now we can draw this window again. It's just going to match the shape of the car basically. Um, Okay, so that's my window, and all I need to do is grab my black arrow now, and click inside it, and press delete, and we've got a window. You could draw a driver in there or something like that if you wanted to, but I'll leave that to you to do in your own time. But basically, that's our car. What I'm going to do is go to my car layer down here and just click on it once, and that's going to select all those parts that I've just drawn to make the car. I'm going to go to modify and convert that to a symbol. Okay, it's going to make it one big shape, and. The name of that symbol is obviously going to be car. The type will be movie clip. Registration points fine there. So just click OK. And that just turns it into one big shape. So it's time to animate this car now, make it drive from one side of the page to the other. So to begin with, at frame number one in our timeline, we want to have this car in its starting position. So the starting position for this car is just off the stage over here. Actually, before I do that, I might make it a little bit smaller. It's just a bit too big for my liking. I think that'll be better. All right, so we're going to put it just off the stage. So when we run our animation, to begin with, there's going to be no car on the page. What we're going to do over time, so across our timeline here, is have the car drive across the road, and it will finish off the stage on the other side. So I'm going to go across my timeline. I'm going to go up to about frame 70 here, and press F6. And using my arrow keys, I'm just going to hold shift and nudge that car all the way across to the other side of the page. Now you'll notice that our backgrounds disappeared. That's because the road, the hills, and the sky are still sitting on frame 1. We haven't told them to come all the way up to frame 70 and continue with our animation. So what you need to do is go to frame 70 on the road layer. Just press F5 to put a blank frame in. And do the same for the hills and the sky layer. Just press F5 on frame 70 and that will stretch your animation out 70 frames so when we press enter we've got a car that starts here our animation plays and it finishes over there what we're going to do is create a classic tween where flash does the animation for us and fills in the gaps between frame 1 and frame 70 so instead of us doing it frame by frame and moving that car little bits at a time to go across the page what we're going to do is right click on the car layer somewhere between frames 1 and 70 so right click your mouse 
and create a classic tween. And you can see this line appears and the boxes or the frames are shaded purple now. And what that says is you've got a classic tween there and Flush has filled in the gaps and animated that for you. So as I press enter, you can see that that car drives slowly across the page. Okay, if you want it to repeat itself, press control enter and you'll see that this car continually drives across the page. All right, it's just on repeat. So that's a fairly simple example of how you can draw some basic shapes in uh, Flash or Animate to make a bit of a background there. And you've also learned how to create a classic tween to make your car drive across the page. I prefer classic tweens over motion tweens. I just find they're a lot easier to use. Very simple. All you need to do is define a start point and an end point and just let Flash fill in the gaps with a classic tween. So it's as simple as that. Make sure when you're done, you save it up, give it an appropriate name, and see you in the next tutorial.